Oh my god, it is actually here. Utopia is actually here, bro. Woo! Oh my god, I waited. I stayed up until midnight to listen to this. I've listened to the album three times now, which is pretty crazy. It didn't even release 12 hours ago as I'm recording this. I listened to it once, went to sleep, I woke up, and while I was editing today's video for the main channel, I was listening to this album. I listened to it the whole time. Uh, and then I listened to it again afterwards, and now I'm making this video, because I feel like I've listened, listening to it three times, I feel like is enough for me to give a formal opinion on it, right? And it is incredible. I am so happy with this album. So when I first listened to it, the first six songs, I wasn't sure of, actually. I was like... Uh, I because I I know Travis Scott for having a lot of features, right? And so when he comes out with an album, typically he doesn't show the features on the album, and you listen to it and you kind of guess what the features are. And I love that. I love not knowing what it is, especially when you're listening to it right as it comes out. You really don't know who's on it. You know what I mean? As if you're listening to it a couple hours later, you probably already got spoiled for who's on the song. So the first six songs didn't have any rap features. They had features um, like they had Casey, Tizo Touchdown, Bon Iver, uh, but that's about it. And a few like other things that aren't credited that I can't see anywhere. But yeah, and so I was like, oh, I wasn't sure about this. And then there's a huge switch up after song six, and then it's just feature, 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 feature. Love it. I think that's incredible. So I've listened to it a couple times. Uh, Hyena, the intro track, I think is a fantastic intro. I love how the first 30 seconds you're almost confused as to what this song is going to be and the album as a whole is going to be because it's just an acapella and there's no beat and then the beat comes in and you're like, oh my god, this is crazy. So I love it. I think the intro track is fantastic. It sets a great tone for the rest of the album. Thank God is the next song produced by Kanye. I love this beat. I pretty much love all the beats on this album, to be fair, but I love Casey's feature on this song as well. He sounds amazing. It's just, this song has just an insane atmosphere, and in the middle where he goes like, ah, it's just incredible. <laughs> I love his flow on this song. It's, it's fantastic. I love the second one, too. Modern Jam is the third one, and there's a lot of people that are iffy on this one. So when I first heard this, I wasn't sure about it. And it's not my favorite still, but I do think it's a pretty good track. I, I do enjoy it a lot more than I did originally. It's not my favorite. It's not in my top five on this album, but I do think it is enjoyable. I do think it's listenable, right? Now, when we come to the next song, My Eyes, I'm not crazy about the first half. I do think the song is great overall. I think it's good. I'm not going to say great. I do think the song is good overall, but I'm not crazy about the first half of my eyes. It's just not something where I'm like, wow, this is incredible. I love Bon Iver on this song, and uh, I like the second half of the song where Travis is rapping, but, you know, the first half I'm just not a big fan of. And the next one, God's Country, track number five. This sounds just like a Kanye song, in my opinion. I really wish this song was like two minutes longer. I love the... I love when he does that with autotune. It sounds fantastic. And I really wish Kanye was on the song. And I'm going to be honest. I know this is a super unpopular opinion. I'm not a big Kanye fan. I, I know that's like a crazy thing to hear. I'm not a big Kanye fan. I don't really like his voice. And to be fair, I'm super conditioned to like new school rap. So I love when artists use a ton of autotune. Travis uses a ton of autotune. It sounds fantastic. Um, that's why I love Travis Scott in general. Rodeo, in my opinion, by the way, Rodeo is the best album, best trap album ever. That album is a 10 out of 10 for me. I love it. So going into this, I already love Travis. So this isn't anything crazy, me loving this album. Um, but yeah, I think God's Country was great. I wish it was longer. That's the only complaint I have. But it sounds like a Kanye feature would do so well on it. Uh, so the next one, track number six, is Sirens. It's one of my favorites. It's a top five for me. Uh, the intro is phenomenal. It gives an insane atmosphere to what's going to happen on the track. And I love Travis's verse and the look out sample. You know, the one that's like, look out, look out, look out, look, 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 How it does that at the end. I love when artists put random voice samples in their songs. 
it's incredible. Like I said, this song is a top five for me. I think it's fantastic. I love the kind of choir intro at the beginning. It's it's incredible, man. And then at the end, there's a phone call from Drake. He's like. What do you mean this isn't Utopia? What what do you think it was? And I think that's kind of interesting, right? Because I feel like the first six songs, people weren't expecting Utopia to kind of be like that. And then after this point, it sounds a lot like a Travis Scott album, right? Uh, the first six songs don't sound much like a Travis Scott album. And then after that, it sounds like a Travis Scott album. So I think it's really cool how after the sixth song, he's like, what do you mean this isn't Utopia? Um... I don't know if that's what they meant when they were doing that on this album, but I think that's really cool. Uh, so yeah, the next song is featuring Drake, Meltdown, and it is a fucking banger. It is an absolute banger. Drake's verse on this is insane. I wish when they did the beat switch uh, halfway through this song, I wish Travis and Drake went back and forth. I love when artists do that. Um, I'm reminded of XXX Tentacion and Ski Master Slump God when they did uh, Freddy vs. Jason. I love when artists go back and forth. Travis says a line, Drake says a line, Travis says a line, Drake says a line. I think that would have made the song way better. Uh, but, you know, it's unfortunate. You know, that, I mean, that's pretty much what they did on Sicko Mode. They didn't do line for line, but Travis would have like four bars and Drake would have four bars. I like it. I really wish they did that on here. But, you know, it is what it is. I still think Meltdown is a fire song nonetheless. And so Fiend is the next one featuring Playboy Cardi. And the genius uh, page for Utopia says it's also featuring Sheck Wes. And. I think Sheck West is on like the movie version or something. I I've heard that before. But people are saying Playboy Cardi is the guy with the deep voice in the song. And I just don't believe that. I've listened to a lot of Homicide Gang. And it sounds a lot like Homicide Gang. Especially at the end when the ad-libs are literally Homicide, Homicide, Homicide. And I know a Playboy Cardi has done that before. He does that in uh, Rockstar Made on Whole Lot of Red. But... I really don't think this is Playboy Cardi. I, I think it's him saying, Fiend, Fiend. I think that's Playboy Cardi on the hook. But I don't think it's Playboy Cardi on the verse. I think that's Homicide Gang. And I could be wrong about that. I don't think I am. Because I just don't think Playboy Cardi could sound like this. If I'm wrong, then Playboy Cardi is the greatest artist of all time. But, uh, yeah, I'm a huge Playboy Cardi fan. So, you know, I love, I love Homicide Gang because they sound a lot like Playboy Cardi. And I, yeah, like I said, I don't think that this is Cardi on this song. Regardless, though, I think Fiend is fantastic. It's a top five for me for sure. Meltdown, Fiend, and Sirens. Those three songs in a row, they're in top five for me in, in my opinion. I think it's fantastic. This next song, Da Resto Echoes with Beyonce. I love this. You know, I was looking at Twitter and some people were saying this was the gay pride anthem, this song. And if that's the case, then I'm the gayest person ever because I think this song is fantastic. I think it's fucking incredible. I'm not a huge Beyonce fan. Uh, when I, I mean, I couldn't even name you one single Beyonce song. I don't really listen to Beyonce at all. But I think she does a fantastic job on this song. I think the beat is incredible. And I love, I just love the flow of it all. I love Travis's part in this. I just think it's fantastic. I would listen to the song on my own for sure, for sure. I think it's great. And yeah, that's all I have to say about Echoes. The next song is I Know. Now, this is a solo song by Travis himself, and I really like it. I really like it. Uh, I kind of wish there was more to it because this song kind of sounds like it could be impossible. If y'all have listened to Rodeo, the song called Impossible. This sounds like it could be like that, where then it has a little switch up, and then this like beautiful, I don't know what the word is, but this beautiful, if you listen to Impossible, you know what I mean. But I wish there was more to I Know. I still think it's a good song. It's something I probably will come back to. I think it's pretty great, but I do wish more was added to it, and yeah, that's about it. Overall, I think the song is good, though, you know? And then the next one, people were really hyping this song up, Topia Twins. I don't really like it. I don't really like it. I feel like Travis Scott takes a lot of breaks in this song. Like he'll like Rob 49 goes crazy. Rob 49 is just 
going ham like a machine gun. He just keeps talking, keeps rapping, going, going, going. And then I feel like when Travis gets on, he says something and then he goes, dun, 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 dun. like you can hear him breathing. And I, I don't like that <laughs> at all. I think that's weird as hell. So I don't really like Travis's part on this. And people are really gassing up 21 Savage's verse on this as well. And I don't really like it either. Something that I find really crazy is that people will dog on to baby for sounding the same on every song. And 21 Savage to me just sounds the same on every song. He doesn't do anything crazy. Like one thing you can never say about Travis, right, is that he sounds the same on every song because he does so many vocal effects. He does so many different cadences. Uh, he changes his voice all the time. And, you know, 21 Savage just doesn't do that at all. And that's part of the reason why I don't really like this song. I'm just not a big fan of Topia Twins. And, yeah, it is what it is. I think Rob49 did a fantastic job on his verse, though. And so the next one, Circus Maximus featuring The Weeknd. I'm not a big Weeknd fan. Um, the... Only song I like with Travis in the weekend is Skeletons. Skeletons is a phenomenal fucking masterpiece if you've listened to Astro World. That song is unbelievable. It's got uh damn it, what's the guy's name? Tame Impala is on that song as well. That song is fucking fantastic. But Circus Maximus, I do think the beat is insane. I'm just not a big fan of the weekend, and that's about it. Now the next song is Paracel. I believe Paracel is an interlude. And this interlude is fantastic. I love Young Ling's part on this. I just, oh man, this song is just incredible. This song is fucking fantastic. It, it's like I said, it's just an interlude. So it's nothing where you're like, wow, this is amazing. But I love when Travis, I mean, this is such a dark beat. Travis has a deep voice. Um, it almost sounds like he's talking into a fan at certain times. And the beat is just so dark. Mike Dean did a fantastic job on this whole album. And it's incredible. Um, Lost Forever is the name of the next song featuring James Blake and West Side Gun. I don't like this song. I'm not a big fan of West Side Gun. I don't think he adds much to the song at all. James Blake is a W, though. James Blake is fucking fantastic. Same thing with Travis. They're both fantastic. But West Side Gun, I'm just not a huge fan of. Next one, Love featuring Kid Cudi. <sighs> Guys, I hate to say it. I think Kid Cudi has fallen off, man. Every time I listen to a Kid Cudi feature, I feel like he ruins the song. I don't like Kid Cudi at all anymore. I feel like he hasn't made a crazy song since Day and Night. And that's like a 10-year-old song or something like that. And I just wish he would... I don't know. I feel like he just doesn't add a lot to tracks nowadays. I do like his song with Cardi, Metamorphosis. But that's about it, man. I, I just feel like this guy hasn't done much in a while. I mean, Kids See Ghosts is a good album as well. Kanye and Kid Cudi's album. But I feel like Kanye definitely outshines Kid Cudi on that album. You know, he hasn't really had a feature where he's the highlight of it. And I know Travis is heavily inspired by or heavily influenced by Kid Cudi. But... Man, Kid Cudi is just not it on some of these songs. He just doesn't sound great. And that's how I feel about it. I know that's kind of a controversial opinion, kind of a hot take, because people love Kid Cudi to death. But to me, he's just falling off to me. And the next one's K-pop. This song just isn't for me. It's a super, you know, pop style song. It's got all these big names on it. It's meant to sell a lot. It's just not a song for me. It's not something I really enjoy. And the next two... Telekinesis, actually, I'm not going to do the next two. The next one, Telekinesis featuring Future and SZA. Amazing. I think this song is amazing. I don't like Future's voice in the middle of it. It's like kind of, um, it's kind of like voice crackiness. I don't really like that. I love Future. I think Future is one of the greatest trap artists of all time. But I don't really like this I just don't think he fits on the song in the middle very well. He fits pretty well at the beginning portion, but in the middle, it's like, uh, I don't know about this. Travis does a phenomenal job. SZA does an amazing job. SZA's fantastic, and that's how I'm feeling about that. Till Further Notice featuring 21 Savage and James Blake. This is also in my top five. Oh, my God, I skipped Schizo. I just realized that. Oh, my God, I skipped Schizo. Oh, my God, we have to go back. Schizo featuring Young Thug. I can't believe I did that. Schizo featuring Young Thug, Jesus Christ. 
That is incredible. That song is incredible. Again, I wish they did more with this song. This song is six minutes long. Young Thug's verse is about a minute. And Travis fills up the next five minutes. And I believe there's three different beat switches in this song. But I wish Young Thug was in more of this song. Or I wish another artist, maybe Drake, was on like the third beat or something. I feel like this song could have been a lot bigger than it was. But the first beat is incredible. I love Young Thug's verse on this. His flow is incredible. Um, yeah, it's a vibe for sure. Schizo is a fucking vibe for sure. And so, yeah, now we're at the final one. Till Further Notice featuring 21 Savage and James Blake. Like I said, this is a top five for me. If anyone's curious, my top five songs on this whole album are Sirens, Meltdown, Fiend, Till Further Notice... And I think I'm going to go with Del Resto Echoes with Beyonce, apparently the gay pride anthem. Uh, those are my top five, man. Till Further Notice is an incredible song. It's one, something you have to listen to. I can't describe it for, for you to know, but it's something you have to listen to to really understand why it's so amazing. This is an, an oh my God, this is an incredible outro. It's one thing that Travis Scott does, his outros are amazing. You know, this album is fucking fantastic, and it's very rare for me to say that. Typically, when I hear an album, I'm not a big fan of it the first time. I'm like, uh, I don't know about this. But then I listen to it again. I'm like, okay, this is good. And let's do it again. Let's do it again. I'm like, okay, this is actually a really good album. It's It's been a while since I listened to an album, and the first listen, I thought it was really good. And now I think it's great. I've listened to it three times, every song three times now. Some songs I've listened to many more than three times. Like I've listened to Till Further Notice a lot. I've listened to uh, Fiend and Meltdown a lot and Sirens. But yeah, yeah. So what would I rate this album out of 10? I'd rate it a 9, maybe a 9.5. I just think it's incredible, dude. I love what he did with this. Um, it's not as good as Rodeo. I still think Rodeo is a 10 out of 10, but in my opinion, his albums go, uh, Rodeo is the best, Utopia is the second best, Astroworld is number three, and number four is uh, Birds in the Trap sing McKnight. And that's how I'm feeling. I really love this thing. I'm so impressed. This guy is one of the best trap artists of all time in my opinion he just continues to put out amazing songs and people say that his features like pink tape on his feature on pink tape on a people say he was like falling off and they're like oh man he's falling off i'm worried about his next album this proves that he just never fell off and it's an incredible album and uh, i can't wait to see what he comes out with next because he just seems to put out hits after hits and it's amazing to see so yeah nine nine point five ish i think i would put it as a nine point five out of ten uh, i think it's incredible and yeah that's uh all i wanted to talk about travis scott utopia nine point five thanks for watching